Hi, my name's Dan, and you might be wondering what ViewSonic is all about. We obviously make touch interactive displays, which is great, but is there more than just using your hand as the mouse? And a lot of times, things like this get used as projectors. So that's where our MyViewBoard whiteboard software comes in. This is our interactive whiteboarding tool, and what's so great about it is that it works with everything that you already have. Many times when we introduce new technology, it's overwhelming and it doesn't get utilized. So then devices like this just get pushed into the corner. Let's take a look at why Whiteboard is so easy to use. First things first, we have the ability to sign in. This is important because a lot of our content already exists in the cloud, maybe Google Drive or OneDrive. We don't have to mess around with a new account, a new password, something extra to remember. We just use the same account we always sign in with. Once we're signed in, this is going to allow us to import. This is a really important step because nothing is worse than feeling like you have to start over from scratch. This tool here, the magic box, allows us to import our current content. So for example, if I have a Google Slides presentation, I can import it. Maybe I already have interactive files like Smart Notebook or Promethean Flipchart. All those can immediately be brought in. So what I'm gonna do here is just go open my magic box. Again, you can see the Google Drive or cloud integration here. And I'm just gonna go into my drive and quickly pull up a lesson. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Magic Box can import things like Google Docs. It can also import PDFs, Google Slides, PowerPoints, and Word documents as well. Let's go ahead and open this PDF here. Now, this PDF is gonna have four pages on it. Two of them are answer key pages. So I don't wanna bring those in. I just want the first two pages. So Whiteboard here is gonna let me select which pages I wanna import. So we'll select pages one and two, choose the import button. And with very little effort, I'm able to bring in content I've already created. Again, I didn't have to start from scratch. Now I can use some of the cool My Viewboard tools to interact with this. So I can have students come up and annotate. Let's use this hand tool. This is called Infinite Canvas. This is gonna let us zoom in and get closer because sometimes it's hard to see. We'll switch to our pen tool. Now students can come up and circle the action verbs. Go back to the hand tool. Again, this is called Infinite Canvas. And I scroll, and you'll notice that everything sticks. I want you to remember that. Anything that's brought into Whiteboard stays. If we go to our next page and then come back, Whiteboard remembers where everything is. So I was able to sign in, import my content, and then finally, I wanna be able to save and share it. So I could save it as a teacher copy. That's what we have file management for. This is the folder here. Floppy disks, hopefully you know what that icon means. Yeah, that's the save icon. This allows us to save back to our cloud storage, right? So that brings in, again, that workflow that's really simple and easy to manage. I'm already used to saving in Google Drive. I'm already used to saving in OneDrive. Well, we can continue to do that. Plus I can share it with my other teachers if we wanna collaborate on this. But what about students? What if I wanted to give this out as notes? What if I wanted to send it and share it? That's why we have what we call the QR share. So if I hit QR share and say yes, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this presentation, convert it to a PDF, put it in my Google Drive, automatically create that share link so everybody can view it, and then it's gonna display this QR code as well as a short link. This is really important because if students have devices that can scan QR codes, all they gotta do is scan this QR code and they get a copy of the presentation in PDF format, right? Which is a nice universal format. But maybe I use some sort of LMS, maybe I use Blackboard or Google Classroom or something like that. You'll notice down here, there's a short link. I can copy that short link and put it directly into my LMS. And again, everybody has access to the notes. So, so far, we've seen how Whiteboard can immediately bring in our content 
that we've already created. I didn't have to start from scratch. But some content lives outside of our cloud storage. Some of it is web-based. As an example, the FET website. This is a great math and science simulation resource. I know many of you use online curriculums. How do we use Whiteboard with a website? That's just something that can't be imported, right? Well, let's go back to Whiteboard and let's focus on this tool down here. Now, this is a Windows only feature. However, what it does is it allows us to essentially go into desktop mode. We call this Windows toggle, or I call it right on anywhere. So when we press this button, you'll notice that it actually hides our canvas. And now we can see the FET simulation website. Now my touch, my hand, is still in what we call mouse mode. So we can go over here and get our skateboarder, put them on the ramp, and they can start going backwards. Now, if I was teaching a lesson, I might ask students to predict where our skateboarder would end up if we adjusted something like friction or gravity. Well, how do I write on this? How do I do that in this current mode? If you notice over here on the right, when I touched that toggle mode, this floating toolbar came up. So I'm actually still in whiteboard even though I'm on the desktop. If I touch the whiteboard icon on the top, this takes me back to my canvas. That's why we call it toggle because I'm essentially switching from my whiteboard to desktop mode. So let's go ahead and switch back to our desktop mode or toggle mode. And let's turn on our pen. Remember, I said every time we touch, we're currently clicking. If you go to the toolbar at the very bottom, you'll see the pen icon. Let's select that and you'll see that my entire menu expands. So now I'm not in click mode anymore. I'm in create mode. And what this allows me to do is I can choose different pen colors. I could draw shapes or do whatever that is. But let's just do some sample predicting. So uh, we're going to increase friction. So group one thinks the skateboarder will stop there. Group three thinks they're going to stop there. And group two thinks they're going to stop there. Well, normally this would be a problem because if I try to go increase friction, well, I can't do that because I'm still in pen mode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back to mouse mode. And when I do this, what it does is it turns off my pen and now I can click and interact with my website. So if I want to increase the friction, I can drag the slider over and we can see here our skateboarder begins to decrease, right? Because the friction increased and congratulations to group three, they made the correct prediction. Now this is an overlay, meaning it's not actually sticking on the website. It's impossible for us to actually write inside the website. So if you ever taught with an overhead projector and vis-a-vis -vis markers, right? You know what I'm talking about. So I have a couple choices. One, I could just clear all this out or I could return to my whiteboard. But what if I wanted to capture this? What if I wanted to add this to my notes? That's where our screen capture tool comes into play. Anytime you see that camera lens in our software, that's take a picture or capture something. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we're gonna use our area capture. What this does is it grays out the screen and allows me to choose a selection. And when I let go, you'll see here that it takes a picture and then puts it on my canvas. So this is a great way to be able to go outside of Whiteboard and access that web-based content that can't be imported. Finally, we have our non-digital content. And this is a really important piece because non-digital, right? If you've ever been a teacher and you have to run to the copy machine, right? It's always the wrong time and there's a line or it's broken or something's going on. But we have non-digital content. Let's go back to that action verb worksheet. Maybe I've handed this out or uh, maybe this just isn't in my Google Drive. If you have a document camera, a USB document camera, we can actually open your document camera directly in Whiteboard. But a niftier way to do it is to use what we call the throw tool. Now the throw tool works with an app called the My Viewboard Companion app. This is an app that you can install on your phone. When you're signed into the app, it can actually connect you and your phone together. So how this works is I open the companion app and inside you're gonna see a paper airplane, right? Paper airplane, throw, we're gonna throw it to the board. I'm gonna open my camera and I'm just gonna take a picture of this worksheet here. There you can see my nice picture. I'll touch the check mark and I'm going to send it up 
to the board. When I hear a ding, that means that my throw was successful. And because I'm the teacher on this device and on the board, this is gonna allow me to open the image directly on the canvas here. So you can see here's my image. I can make this bigger. I can zoom in and out on it, just like I did before with the hand tool. But I was super quickly, easily able to grab something non-digital and add it to my presentation. And sometimes we think of it only as a scanner for paper, but maybe students were building something. Maybe they were creating something in art or making a uh, statue or some sort of mold. We can capture those and add them up to our canvas as well. So essentially with Whiteboard, I was able to do three things. One, I was able to sign in with my cloud service, which is super easy, and then import from my cloud, right? So that was that first piece, import your content from Drive. The second piece is I can easily switch over and annotate on any website. So if my content is web-based, I can annotate and capture that. And then the third way is I can use the companion app or a document camera to capture that non-digital content and bring it into the board. Once that's all in there, I can save it as the teacher copy or I can quickly share it with students. And in the whole process, I didn't have to create new content. All I needed to know was how to sign in and use those three simple tools. Now, a lot of that is teacher facing or teacher focused, right? We're talking about bringing in content the teacher's already created. But we also have the ability to engage kids and engage students. So something that's cool about Whiteboard is that when you're signed in, every teacher has what we call their own portal. So it's a web URL that students can go to and then interact remotely with the board. There's many ways you can do this, such as screen sharing and also using that throw tool I just showed you, but let's focus on one called Pop Quiz. So I have some participants here in the room with me and I'm gonna pretend they're my students. So they would actually go to this URL, myviewboard.com sharp. And the way I can access this is by touching my name in the top left corner and it also will display that URL and that QR code. Now the Pop Quiz tool exists in the Magic Box. And we learned about the Magic Box earlier because that was our import tool. So if I go over to the top, you'll see this icon that looks like fireworks in the letters A, B, C, D. And there's a spot for a question up there. I can write the question or I can just ask it verbally. I'm just gonna verbally ask my audience, how are you feeling today? And they're gonna go ahead and send me a throw. Now down here at the bottom, this is what we call our answers section. So as students submit their responses, you'll see they appear. So I can reveal Blake's, I can reveal George's by touching on it. And if I go in here and I wanna zoom in on a student response, I just do a right click. So it's a two second touch and hold and let go. And then it's gonna zoom in on their response. I now have teacher annotation tools that I can annotate over it. And again, I say teacher, but it doesn't always have to be the teacher, right? We could do peer review if we wanted to. So I can say, I love this. Rock on, big exclamation point. I'm feeling great today. Cycle over to the next one, right? Looking for a fight, haters, right? We're gonna fight all over it. Feeling great. And the cool thing about this is that if students have touch devices, right, they can write. Or if they don't, there's also a text input. What I like in this tool too is, if you've ever been in class and you've handed whiteboards to students and they had dry erase markers, and you said, answer the question and hold up and show me your boards. That's essentially what pop quiz is, but it's digital. In addition to being able to give feedback and collect student responses, I can also save. So there's our fun floppy disk again. When I choose the floppy disk, what this is gonna allow me to do is save all of my responses back into Google Drive, right? We keep it all in one nice simple place. Finally, when I'm finished with all of this, I can sign out after I've saved everything. And it's like I was never at the board. So part of that is that security piece, right? We're signing into the whiteboard. It's giving us access to Google Drive and I can walk away from the board and it was like I was never there. This is especially helpful if you have teachers who are sharing classrooms or maybe substitutes coming in or maybe the SPED teacher. This is just a small sample of what whiteboard can do. These are the basics, right? Easy adoption, easy to grasp onto. It can do many advanced things as well. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of why having a touch board is really cool, but pairing it with whiteboard is really where the magic happens.